I've tried to start this script like 20 different ways, but I think the first thing I need to say is that I love this stupid game. It's just so silly and so fun and so serious all at the same time. It's like the game was specifically handcrafted for me. In the first five days of playing it, I already had 70 hours in and I'd do it all again if I could, which is all going to make this challenge that much harder, but it's okay. I've steeled myself at least a little since the depressing episode that was I killed every NPC in Skyrim. I can do this, but what I can't do is make it happen by my Myself. Baldur's Gate 3 is too new and too huge to have all of its information out there on the internet. So, by doing this in three parts, I'm hoping that I will get some help from you guys at home to tell me if I missed anyone, if there's anyone who's hard to find that I should watch out for, or if I've screwed myself over somehow and have locked myself out of killing anyone for any reason. Now, like with Skyrim or Oblivion or whatever, I'm talking specifically about unique NPCs. NPCs that aren't basic, like Goblin Sharp Eyes or Shadows. Though, to be fair, I'm gonna try and kill them too. Frankly, I just want to be able to walk anywhere in this massive world and not find any life. I just heard that for the first time out loud, and Jesus Christ. <laughs> now, I said that I'm gonna need your help, and I will, but I think I've got Act 1 pretty covered, and this video is gonna be long enough already without all my rambling, so let's get into the massive task of killing every NPC in Baldur's Gate 3. Making a character is actually my favorite part of the game. I made sure to be the Dark Urge because A, some NPCs don't spawn if you don't pick the Dark Urge, and B, if I didn't, the comments would be riddled with people saying, oh, you should have picked the Dark Urge, and honestly, they're right. In fact, they're so right that I had already done the entirety of Act 1 already, but realized that I should be the Dirge, so I restarted, and now we're here. This does mean that I won't run into other origin-specific characters like Losir, which sucks, but there's not really a way around that. As far as my actual character goes, though, I figured a tiefling would be the most fitting race, considering that racists already refer to them as foul bloods, so I might as well prove them right. I'm always inspired by those Tav- uh, Tav? Tav? Is it Tav or Tav? Oh my god, I don't know. I'm always inspired by those Tave edits on TikTok. <laughs> It's not Dave. I'm always inspired by those custom character edits on TikTok, so I tried to make her look cool and unique. I gotta say, I like her. For my class, I went with a Paladin because not only are they insanely strong, but an Oathbreaker Paladin just kind of feels right. Then I just gotta name her, and sticking to the devilish theme, I named her Dumphalees. Welcome to the pantheon of genocidal maniacs, Dumphalees. Now we can get start- oh right, my Guardian. Well, I think I'm actually gonna let my Guardian be a surprise for now. Oh, also. So I know this kind of goes without saying, but here's a big spoiler alert. I mean, I'm gonna end up beating the game and stuff, so duh. Dark Urge or not, the first place we still find ourselves is waking up on the Nautiloid in Avernus. Our character has a bit of amnesia and can't remember her past. No worries though, we'll get that all sorted out as we go. I looted the starting room and then got into my first NPC kill pretty quickly. There is what's called an intellect devourer in this guy's head. Intellect devourer? More like TikTok, am I right guys? Because <laughs> the cause the kids, they got they have applesauce for brains now? I've never felt older than I do right now. Anyways, you can free the creature, but that will kill the guy. So of course I punched him in the f***ing head, pulled his brain out, and now I had a little friend. This is us. I don't have to kill us right now, and I could use his help in the fight to come, so I refrained from attacking him. Two seconds later we meet a very important character, the Gith Goat, Lazel. People hate on Lazel, and I guess I probably did too at some point, but she definitely has grown on me. With Lazel and us by my side, I completed the tutorial fight and made my way deeper into the bowels of the ship. Speaking of bowels, I made these guys spill theirs by murdering them. At least I'm pretty sure that's what happens when you die. I, I don't know, I haven't died yet. I ran right past Shadowheart, killed a little brain guy that is different from my little brain guy, picked up a rune, and made sure I stopped to transform this lady in the pod. Technically, this isn't killing her, but it is made abundantly clear in the game that Mind Flayers don't have souls, so she might as well be dead. I took that rune I got two seconds ago and used it to free Shadowheart. Gods above do I love this woman. Favorite companion, bar none, don't f at me. I've kind of got a full squad now, and I'm ready for our first big fight. Stepping into the helm, we are greeted with some Hellspawn versus Mind Flayer action. My first attempt was a complete bust, but on the second try, the Mind Flayer was a little more useful and helped me get the kill. I then killed the Mind Flayer, got Zulk's cool sword, and made my way to the transponder to get the hell out of hell. The ship is redirected and we are sent tumbling to our death, except we're saved at the last second. We'll also have to figure that out later. Upon waking up, I had just enough XP to level up and got some pretty powerful new stuff for doing so. Before helping Shadow heart, I stepped up to a corpse and found a smile crawling across my character's face. I tried to remember the last time I stood over a corpse, but had no such luck. I shook Shart and had her... <laughs> 
Sorry, Shark gets me every time. I shook Shart and had her join my party. With the cool sword I got from Commander Zulk, we killed some more TikTokers and then ran into yet another very important character, Astarian. We got off on the wrong foot, but with a little psychic intervention, we ended up joining forces. I usually just send him to camp, but this time I think I'm gonna take him with me, at least for now. Not far down the way, there's an injured mind flayer and you'd best believe I put that sucker down. I then approached a little wormhole looking thing and a hand popped out. I resisted the urge to cut it off, Jesus Christ, and instead pulled him out. This is Gale. Hello. I'm Gale of Waterdeep. I don't love Gale like I love Shadowheart, but I do like him, and I'm taking him with me. With my now full party, I came across some tieflings who had taken a friend of mine prisoner. I tricked them to let Lazelle down, and once she was out, we turned on the tieflings. The fight was nothing special, but doing this did end up breaking my paladin oath. My oath broken, I was confronted by the Oathbreaker Knight, and he told me that he'd see me at my camp tonight. I also sent Lazelle to camp, so now I have two people to nag at me later. Now, we've done a little killing, but this part here is going going to be our first bigger slaughter of NPCs. I positioned my team to do maximum damage to these guys and took them all out in one turn. We're not done killing yet, there's still plenty of these guys inside the actual ruins. I broke in and used a single fire bolt to just blast them all. I cleaned up the stragglers and tore my way further inside. I pissed off a bunch of skeletons, who I ended up absolutely annihilating, reached level 3, and then found Withers, one of the best NPCs in this whole game. And, just so we're clear, I don't get to kill Withers. He's one of the very few that are untouchable, and without some kind of mods or cheats, or help from you guys I guess, it's just not gonna happen. I felt like this was a good place to hit the hay and took the team to camp. Everyone in camp was in a f***ing mood. Lazelle barked at me like I knew she would, Astarian was creepy, Shadowheart was all suspicious and weird, and Gale was remarkably somber. Go to hell. Then I had a long talk with the Oathbreaker Knight and took up the title and powers of Oathbreaker for myself. This gave me access to some new powers and with that done, I was actually ready for bed. Now, okay, this is insane, but when I woke up, just out of sheer curiosity, I attacked the Oathbreaker Knight. I had no actual hopes of this going well, but my first hit did way more damage than I was expecting and I realized that I might actually have a chance against this guy. Mind you, he is level 12, the maximum achievable level in Baldur's Gate 3, and my merry band of misfits and and I were all level 3, so this fight should be virtually impossible. He ended up dropping me in a single turn, but I still didn't give up. I kept throwing the best I had at him, and I was chipping away at his health, but all seemed lost after he had downed Shadowheart and Gale with little effort. Then a divine smite from me put me right back in the fight. He killed me again, but I still had my ace in the hole, Astarian. The knight was so distracted with finishing off my other two downed friends that he was completely ignoring Astarian, and with some sneaky shots, he killed the Oathbreaker Knight. Not only did I not know if this was possible or not, but I was certainly not expecting it to happen this early on. I revived everyone and went right the f*** back to sleep. Everyone was looking pretty rough, but a good night's sleep fixed us up. Also, thanks for your help, Lazel. And if you're wondering what the knight dropped, he just had a plus one greatsword and some normal plate armor. A little disappointing. To really get anywhere else, I had to stop by the Emerald Grove. Of course, when I arrived though, it was under attack by some goblins. Just in time though, Will swoops in and says some real deeply cringe Provoke the blade and suffer its sting. I actually didn't do all that much to help because I was trying to let people die, but eventually the fight was over and we were able to enter the grove. There's a little infighting going on and I stood up for my tiefling brother by knocking Arid in on his ass. I rolled a 22, I should have taken his f***ing head off. And then he got up, called me a slur, and ran away. I guess I deserved that. Now there's a lot going on in the grove, so I'm gonna try and get through it quickly. I started doing some trading with Aaron, a Aaron, Ar Aaron, a Aaron, I don't know, dumb name. Then I convinced Nolan and his siblings not to to leave the grove so that I could get some XP. I talked to Will and sent him to camp for now. I intervened in Saza's killing just so I could kill her myself, and then I went into the hidden passage and killed all the goblins there, and of course, helped them finish off Findal. I went back to the surface and found a poor, helpless girl to let my dirge out on. Didn't know you could even do that. Rest in peace. And then rewarded myself with some gruel from Okta. Then, in the actual grove part of the grove, I was confronted by some druids who are apparently trying to keep visitors out. I also really hate Magrin 
Ben's uh, bear transformation, it's it's like as bad as Will's awful one-liners for me. They can't keep a bad b like me out though, and I made my way inside. There's a handful of people to kill here, starting with the harpies that are trying to lure this child into the water. I don't know if you can actually let this kid die. I tried a couple times to just let him go, but no luck. I don't think you can kill children at all in this game actually, so. Oh, I guess I didn't kill every NPC. Oh yeah, I can't wait to see those f***ing comments. I killed the harpies though, and he ran off. Then I attacked Elfira while nobody else was around. Why attack her now? Well, I'll keep that one a secret for a little bit, but don't worry, it'll be explained later. I also killed her squirrels. And while I was over there, I killed Orm the bear, because I don't think he sticks around forever. Okay, so wait, I lied. There is actually one child I can inadvertently kill. Kalga, the big queen of the grove captured a little tiefling girl named Arabella. You can make her try to escape, and if you do, she'll get bitten by a snake and die. It's completely undeserved, of course, but I've got a job to do. Then, Kaga gives you a bunch of ridiculously sassy expressions and tells you to f*** off. Before I f***ed off, I stopped and used a spell to talk to Arabella's dead body. It was way more sad than I was ready for. I asked why she stole the idol, the reason that she was apprehended in the first place, and she said she did it to make sure that her people wouldn't have to leave the grove. And when I asked asked what I should tell her parents, she didn't have an answer, because what are you really supposed to tell the parents of a murdered little girl? I did let them know though. I don't know if that really does anything for me, but I do have a heart in there somewhere. I think I've caused enough trouble for now, so let's hit the open road. Right outside of the grove, there are three people, cultists, who were attacked by an owl bear. I didn't even talk to them, I just had Gale lay them out and Astarian finished off the survivor. That owl bear I mentioned is in a cave nearby and it's not alone. I won't make you watch it, but here's the aftermath. I killed the owl bear, sure but the hard part was killing the cub. You can befriend the cub and have him be part of your camp later, so this just felt really bad. Rest in peace, owlbear family. It had been a long day, so I called it a night. When I did, a dragonborn named Quill Grootslang showed up to my camp. This is why I killed Alfira earlier. If I hadn't, then Alfira would have shown up in camp instead, and I wouldn't have ever gotten to see Quill. I invited her to stay, and in return, she sang? Hurry, hurry. Wow, almost makes what's about to happen feel better. We all go to sleep, but I wake up in the middle of the night to find Quill's eviscerated body lying before me. Clearly this was my doing, but my character can't remember doing it and I decided not to hide the body from my companions. Astarian made me laugh. Now, I can't help but notice that one of us is positively drenched in blood, so? And I owned up to my actions. Nobody was particularly pleased, but I'm honest if nothing else, and with that out of the way, I left camp once again. I was on an evil stream already, so I thought that maybe now was a good time to make one of the most oppressing kills in the game. This is Scratch. Just know before I do this that Scratch is a very good boy. At least he can be with his owner now. That one is right up there with Miko for hardest kills ever, man. That, uh, that sucks. Gotta shake it off though, because I've still got lots of work to do. A little further up the way is a fellow tiefling named Karlak. She's kinda having a bad time when we first encounter her, but she pretty quickly returns to her quirky, silly attitude. Karlak is actually someone that Will is hunting, so I sent her to camp and went to bed so that I could get that confrontation over with. Then it occurred to me, I don't actually need her. I mean, her quest doesn't have any special encounters. Sure, she hates Gortash, who we meet later, but we'd meet him without her anyways. So with these facts in mind, I turned on Karlak, attacked her, and killed her. Between the owl bears, Scratch, and now Karlak, I am feeling bummed. There are some fraudulent d bags I can take it out on though. In the morning, I went straight to the toll house to take on the fake paladins of Tyr. Sorrel got killed in one hit, Anders got killed in one hit, I was very shocked about that, and then Trin didn't stand a chance on her own. It didn't make me feel all the way better, but it helped. I went down and looted the cellar, including the secret room over here, and then went knoll hunting. There's a bunch of knolls and hyenas along this road and in this area in general, but those don't give me too much trouble. In fact, I even got to level 4 from this and took the savage attacker feat, a feat that helps me make an already strong class even stronger. The knoll that did have me sweating a little was Flind, the leader of the knoll pack. That motherfucker hits hard and takes them like a champ, so it took a while, but I eventually got rid of her and her lackeys. Those gnolls were attacking these two, Rugen and Ali. And can you guess what I did next? Yeah, I know, it's a shocker, but I killed them too. I definitely needed to sleep after all that, but when I got to camp, we were greeted with this hot piece of demon ass. I'm sorry, I know she's a monster, but god damn it, did they make her bad. What, what were we talking about? Oh, right, this is Mazora, Will's patron, and the one who tasked him with killing Karlak. Because he had killed her, well, Okay, he didn't actually help at all, but I guess that's besides the point. But because she's dead, he got a cool 
robe. I guess that's uh, really all you get for Carlac's life, huh? And then I just took that robe and gave it to Gale anyway, so net zero for Will. Before I went to sleep, I attempted to riz up Shadowheart, which was a little more successful than you might have expected, and then I went to bed. I started dreaming about that Vuvuzela I killed earlier, and I went on a walk to shake it off. That's when Scolaritus Sc <laughs> Fell showed up. I tried to switch to someone else to kill him, but everyone else was asleep, so it wasn't possible at the moment. Scolaritus is my butler, I guess, and he brought me a cool cape and told me that he can't wait to see what evil sh I do next. The next day, Shadowheart told me that I had earned her trust and she revealed the details of a mission that she had been sent on. She's supposed to take this artifact and bring it to Baldur's Gate, and that's pretty much all she knows, but it is nice that she opened up. My next area to victimize was the Blighted Village. Inside this barn, there's some strange noises going on. Some groans, some moans, and it's obvious that someone is getting their nut off. When I opened the door, <laughs> Starian just stood there with the funniest smile on his face. I, of course, killed the two lovers, but the image of them in the act will certainly never die. Gale stopped me after this and told me that he has a problem where he needs to eat people's clothes, or something bad will happen. Well, okay, he didn't say it just like that, but that's essentially what he means. I gave him a hat to snack on for now, and that seemed to tide him over. I killed the sleeping bugbear, and then began dismantling the goblins in the village. In one corner of the village, there's a house with three big ogres in it. Now, I'm not racist, but if I was, it would be against goblins and ogres. They're just always really mean, and they kill people, and... Oh... Okay, well, I'm usually nice about it at least. I snuck up and jumped them, which didn't really give them a lot of time to fight back, and because they're so close to each other, I was able to attack multiple at once. They got a hit or two in, but not much more. I took a break from Goblin and Ogre Slaying to drop into this well and take on some spiders. There's two separate fights here, and the first one is moderately difficult. Two medium-sized spiders and two Edder Caps, whatever the f an Edder Cap is. It's really more obnoxious than it is hard, but they're just the warm-up, because as you move a little a little deeper into the cave, you find the Phase Spider Matriarch. I didn't get to sneak up on them like I wanted to, and because of that, we had a rough time. But hey, if I can take on the Oathbreaker Knight at level 3, then I'm pretty sure I can handle some bugs at level 4. Shadowheart went down to some acid, but Mama Spider made a big mistake by running right at me, and between my big ass sword and Gale's unavoidable magic missiles, we exterminated the Matriarch. You'd better believe I was going to sleep after that mess. When I did, I was awoken by a Starian trying to take a bite of me. I'm not sure how the red eyes and sharp fangs didn't give it away, but it's made clear here that Astarian is a vampire. He asks if he can have a little nibble of you, but if you do, you get a debuff for the next day, so I told him to go suck someone else. Morning came, and Shadowheart started the day by sharing one of her few memories she had with me. I guess Shar has taken the rest of her memories, but what she can remember is being saved from a wolf by the Mother Superior and some other Shar worshippers. Now she feels like she owes her life to Shar, and that's part of the reason that she's so dedicated to her cause. I knew all of this already, but it's always nice when she lets her guard down a little Bit. And even better, she invited me to have a night alone with her, so now I had some more motivation to go finish off these goblins. Back in the village, Astarian got caught trying to shoot a goblin, and they threatened to tie him onto a windmill. These guys aren't sh compared to what I've been through at this point, so I just outright attacked them. The best part about learning that Astarian is a vampire is now I could bite people. I killed the leader Fezerk in one hit, and the rest of them tried their best, but to no avail. Now, these freaks already have someone tied to the windmill, Barkus Root. There's two levers you can either pull to help him or hurt him. The break lever and the release break lever. Of course, as not only the dark urge, but because I have to kill everyone, I pulled the release break lever and the poor guy went flying. That's it for the blighted village for now, because I actually forgot a couple people that are hidden away, but don't worry, I'll be back. To the east of the village, we find three adventurers that were outside of the grove when it was attacked. You remember Aridin? I damn near decapitated him earlier. I don't like these guys, so I had no hesitation in beating them up. Aridin was the only one really worth his salt, but I guess that I wasn't saying much. I've got several different places I can go from here, but I chose Joaquin's Rest to be my next crime scene. This place is on fire because it was attacked by some goblin and drow raiders. Perfect time for me to swoop in. These sons of guns are no joke though, so I started the assault while they were all grouped up to maximize damage. The first round was full of misses on both sides, but this jerk, Gauntlet Dane, has an attack called Radiance of the Dawn, which almost always hits, and it hits all of us at the same time. So I was starting to sweat a little bit. That sweating got worse when I was 
almost dropped in one turn. We kept trading blows until Gale did actually get dropped in one turn, and I was down a man. Astarian was really my saving grace here, because while he was posted up on this roof, he was taking out people from a distance. I didn't mean to harp on this fight for so long, it just was a much closer call than I was expecting. Then, when the Flaming Fist members were all dead, I went inside, left Ben Rin to die in the flames, and saved, big air quotes on that, Counselor Floric. When we got outside, I had Astarian post up and shoot her, and Jesus, dude, 42 damage? Ouch! I felt like I had earned some Zs after that insanity, so I went back to camp. I had a really funny interaction with Astarian where he asked me who I would bite if I was a vampire. I'd never seen this before, so I thought he was actually gonna bite whoever I picked, so I picked Lazelle because, I mean, imagine the beating he would get from her if he did. I don't think he really does it, but this was a fun conversation regardless. Also, I would definitely bite Shadowheart. Not just because I like her, but because everyone else is either a living bomb, we'll talk about that later, on fire, or boys. And contrary to popular belief, it's actually boys who have cooties, not girls. Lazelle would be the other option, but I'd like to avoid that aforementioned beating. I went to sleep after our conversation, and my night with Shadowheart began. Nothing crazy happens, no sex with bears or anything, but you do just get to sit and talk for a bit. Then, after a little while, you get your smooch on. Yeah, yeah, I've made the same mistake before when I married Lydia and Skyrim, but what, I can't be happy for a little while? Fun's over though, I've got so much more killing to do. I started the day by double checking checking that Benrin was actually dead, and yep, crispy, and then killed a poor frightened ox because I think he's the only frightened ox in the game, and I'm a monster. Remember those two guys from earlier, Rugen and Ali? Well, those two are part of, let's call them, an organization called the Zentarim. In this building, there are some Zent hiding out in the cellar. This poor soul, Salazan, is protecting that very cellar. I read his mind to learn the passphrase, reassured him he was in no danger, and then murdered him in ice-cold blood. Into the cellar, we meet the leader of this pack of Zentarim, Zaris. I really don't know what it is, but she just pets my peeve. I was cordial for the time being and gave her the shipment that Rugen and Ollie were transporting. This allowed me to do a little trading, I got some cool stuff, and then figured it was time to blow my load. You see, this place is set to pot pretty soon so that these guys can leave and cover their tracks, but I'm an asshole, so I just blew everything up while they were still inside. It really only killed two people, but it always gives me a little chuckle. One of those two people was Oscar, who you can encounter again later in Baldur's Gate, but he's dead now, so so I really hope that doesn't interfere with Lady Janeth's quest. I've still got the majority of the Zent left on the other side of the cave, so I crept over there and ended up making pretty quick work of everyone. Between Astarian's arrows and Gale and Shadowheart's spells, I've got a pretty strong advantage at long range, so they didn't really even get close to me. I looted the place and got out of there. This is when I realized I still had someone left in the Blighted Village, namely the Ornate Mirror. It's pretty durable, so I set a bomb next to it, backed away, and blew it up. That did the job. I also killed the Skeleton Guardian guys, but for some reason I didn't record it. I'm sure at least one person watching this is confused because I still had one person to kill here, but once again, don't worry, I'll be back. Most of the places I have left to go are kinda big, and I wanna save those, so I made my way on down to Auntie Ethel's swamp. These two guys, Joel and Demir, are interrogating Ethel in an attempt to find their sister, and I know damn well that they're in the right, so I sided with them. Ethel retreated, and these poor guys went running into the swamp after her. I was gonna kill them myself, but this cutscene kinda f***ed it up, and they got away. It's all good though, I call them poor guys because no matter what you do, they end up dead in the swamp. I've gotta handle Ethel still, but on my way, I stopped and fought with the addled frog. This thing can be really obnoxious if you don't have the right tools to deal with it, but I have Gale who has magic missile, which is perfect for killing this little guy. I arrived at Ethel's door just as she was scolding Joel and Demir's sister, Mayrina. Now look, I've fought Ethel many times, but I have never, in all my days, seen her die in this room. I didn't even know it was possible, but watch for yourself. I had a critical hit on a pommel strike, which I didn't even know it was capable of doing that much damage, and I think that because she was dazed, she couldn't run away, and so with a sacred flame from Shart, I finished her off right here. I I don't even have a funny quip for this, I'm just shocked. Usually killing her is this whole song and dance where you have to follow her into this nasty tunnel, but everyone in the tunnel was free of her curses. That sucks majorly for them though, because free or not, I still had to end them. First the folks in the gallery, then the mask trio, and then I found Mayrina. Mayrina was actually mad that you killed Ethel because Ethel promised to bring Mayrina's husband been back to life, but as we should all know by now, a hag's word means nothing. I did use Ethel's staff to bring him back though. Bringing him back, meaning raising his dead body to be a zombie, and then, you know, killing them both. Fun times! There's a little more fighting here, next with the monster hunter named Gandrell. Turns out that the monster that he's hunting is
he's actually Astarian, which obviously makes this moment a bit awkward. I wasn't gonna give Astarian up just yet though, although I'm just now realizing that I could have probably and it wouldn't have affected anything, but we all ganged up on Gandrell, and while he did put the hurt on Astarian, he was no match for a full team. It's been four paragraphs since I've slept, so I hit the sack. I'm running out of ways to say I went to sleep. Before we actually slept though, Gale showed me some magic stuff, and though I dodged the romantic part of this event, I do usually let him have his fun. Now I'm really going to sleep. After I left camp, I realized that I never dealt with the red caps that are outside of Ethel's house, so I took care of them, which brought my team up to level 5. This is a huge milestone for me, because not only has it been 6 f***ing pages since I hit level 4, but at level 5, some classes get something called extra attack, which is exactly what it sounds like. You get to do 2 attacks in 1 turn with only using 1 action. It might not sound that exciting, but it makes combat much easier when you're playing a hard-hitting class like a paladin. Like I said a bit ago, I mostly have big stuff left, and I think I'll start with the goblin camp. Before I do though, I stopped by the grove and sold some stuff, and realized I forgot to open the Zentarim package that I took back from Zarus's dead body. Inside is an iron flask, and I'm not gonna spoil what's in it if you don't know, because everyone's first time learning what's inside is extremely funny. Who knows though, I might use it later if we get in trouble. Also, there's a few other folks I want to kill here real quick. First, Nadira and the bugbear assassin. I let the assassin do his thing and then popped him as he was running away. I also hadn't learned at this point that putting turn-based mode on just stops everyone in their tracks, but I still made it happen without it. I'll use that later though, don't worry. On my way out, I saw Timber the squirrel, someone I had totally for- Oh my god! What the f***? I didn't even click anything. Jesus, I don't think I can show that. Darker just f***ed up, dude. I've got no time to feel bad about dead squirrels, though, because I have an entire band of goblins to kill. Is it a band? Huh. What, what would you call a group of goblins? A gaggle? A herd? A school? Well, okay, definitely not a school. These suckers are sharing one brain cell. How about we call them a stench for now? The first stench was sitting outside the camp. Astarian sneakily killed the first goblin, but then was quickly caught. I came to his aid with each individual party member, getting a free shot in, and that clearly this stench right out. There's three more, like 20 feet from where the others were, but these guys are really weak, so it only took one hit each to take them out. When crossing the bridge to actually enter the camp, I started hearing the voice of the Absolute. It gave me a vision of three people, her chosen. These three will matter later on, but for now at least, I don't have to worry about them. The prism that Shadowheart's been carrying this entire time protected us from the voice, and we were back to normal. I really like in this game how people don't know crimes you've committed unless they saw you do it, because I was able to walk into the camp like I hadn't just killed those goblins outside. I traded with Grat, about the only thing a goblin's good for. Sorry, that was uncalled for. Goblins are people too, but not really. I got Volo in trouble by booing him, and then went inside the building where most of the goblins are. When we walked in, Gale tugged on me and told me he needed some fruit snacks. I let him eat a dirty necklace, and then he thought it was time to open up about why he's been eating my clothes. Basically, Gale explains that he has a magic bomb in his chest and needs to absorb magic artifacts to keep the bomb from busting. You have the option after this confession to either tell him to f off somewhere else, or you can tell him that you'll try and figure it out together. I asked him where he'd go if he left the team, and he said he'd go kill himself in the Underdark somewhere. Now, I paused here to see if that was true. If Gale leaves, does he actually kill himself, or is he just saying that? Well, I searched online, and I searched, and I searched, but I could not find a single shred of evidence that Gale follows through on what he says. It seems like, and again, this is just based on what I can find, that you will just never see him again. So, I decided to keep him around because because I don't think people would be satisfied with me just saying, yeah, I think he killed himself. And honestly, I understand. We got a little sidetracked there, but I'm here to kill some goblins. Well, mostly goblins. There's a few other races here I need to kill too. One of those other people is Roa Moonglow. She's another Zentarim hanging out here to make some money. She's got some good stuff, so I traded with her and then made sure to tell her how I murdered all of her friends. She actually didn't seem to mind all that much, but did threaten that the Zentarim would be after me eventually. Ooh, scary, I know. Using the stuff I just bought from her, I sneak attacked her and her friends. I accidentally caught the attention of a goblin too, but he went down easy. I started with these folks because Roa and her pals will actually disappear if you attack the goblins first, and we can't have that. The goblin camp is set up nicely for killing everyone inside because most of the goblins are in smaller groups and so I don't have to fight an entire army all at once. I think for fun, I'm gonna just read off all their names because they're insane, uh, so stick with me here. First we got Nick Nuck, Krub, and Plague. They had a nice trip, then Gerd, Clack, Zombie, and the prisoner Brackle. Again, please forgive me with the pronunciation. Uh, their names are just really f***ing ugly. Then we got Eve, Nas, Neem, 
Gribbo, Tozad, and yes, Volo. Abdurak, the kinky f the torturers Grush and Spike, their victim Liam, whose dead body had a really bad time, one Plig, uh, this one that the gate falls on, three Vrak, and the two wargs Fur and Tail. I always forget Halson is here because I've never really cared that much about this guy, but hey, he's here and he wants to kill goblins with me. In the main hall, we got Grease, True Soul Gut, Shecht, Azak, Moozle, Bez, and Druk. In the back room, there's Kagrin and Narvas, Cry, Huck, Bolt, Rue, True Soul, Dror Ragslin, and Nat. I killed the two spiders, don't even know if they have names, and then confronted the final True Soul here, Minthara, and her stench. You might notice that Astarian's gone, and that's for a good reason. I killed everyone here and then switched to Astarian, who I had posted up in the grove. This guy only shows up if you have someone in the grove when the last True Soul in the camp is killed, and so that's why I sent Astarian here. Problem is, I can't kill him if he's talking to Astarian, so I had to load back and send Shadowheart with him. When I did that though, I was able to switch to Shadowheart, but the guy was nowhere to be seen. My guess is that he isn't a real character anywhere in the camp, and he only exists in this cutscene, but hey, I tried, man. <laughs> that being said, though, that's the entirety of the Goblin Camp interior taken care of. It does make me sad to kill Minthara, because I think she's actually a pretty compelling character if you have her as a companion, but she wouldn't be getting a chance to redeem herself today. That was a big one, so I ended the day. At night, though, the tadpole in my brain started transforming me, and Lazelle tried to kill me to prevent it. I talked her down, but I was still in danger. I fell asleep and woke up in the astral plane to meet my guardian, Dump. Yeah, Dump! You- you guys don't know what the f I'm talking about. Dump from Skyrim. He's the I killed every NPC OG. It's insane how far into this we've gotten without meeting our guardian yet, by the way. Dump tells us that he's using some sort of magic to protect you from turning into a mind flayer and that he wants to help you defeat the absolute. He's also the one who saved us from falling from the ship earlier. That's just about all we get from him for now, though. This day was going to be no small task because I still have to kill all of the jerks outside of the camp. I won't read all their names like I did with the ones inside, but just know that even though there were a lot of them out here, they got pretty creamed. In the midst of the killing, I found this cracked wall at the top of the camp, and I'd never seen it before, so I busted in. It just led back to the interior, but it was still cool to find. Then, for some reason, Raphael decided to show up. I've definitely never had him appear here before, but hey, Raphael is a mysterious guy. Raphael, to those who don't know, is a demon. He transports you to his little corner of hell, and tries his best to impress and coerce you to work with him. He says he can remove the tadpole in our head, but much like with the hag before, you should never make a deal with nefarious creatures like them. I told him to leave me alone, and he took me back to the camp. Back outside, I finished off all the stragglers. There were more of them that I remember being here, but it didn't really make a difference though, because they are all far too weak to stop me at this point. And apparently I had never killed the goblins at the entrance of the interior part, so I killed them all too. Oh, would you believe me if I told you that we are actually done with all the goblins? Not too bad, right? Well, that pretty much just leaves us with the grove then. The tieflings are all conveniently lined up by the entrance, but I made a mistake on my first time killing them. Yes, I killed them all more than once. You see, before you go killing folks willy-nilly, you need to talk to Zevlor first and invite the tieflings to your camp to celebrate the goblins' defeat. I didn't do that on the first time I killed them all, so when I went back to camp later, there were no tieflings. So I loaded back, talked to Zevlor, and then restarted the slaughter beginning with him. For a race of people that descended from literal hell, I was kind of ripping through them like a weed whacker going through a baby's soft spot. I'd I don't, I don't know why I said that, but I feel like the analogy was pretty clear. They were getting destroyed. Them all being grouped up over here is just so incredibly helpful, and I was clearing out several of them at a time. Roland pulled out that thunder wave that he's always talking about, but that was pretty much the most effective damage they managed to deal during this entire fight, and it didn't take long until all of the tieflings were dead. I went further into the grove and killed Damon, not gonna need him if I don't have Karlak, and then I went to camp where there were some new tieflings. Baldur's Gate is really good at taking dead people into account, so for most of the tieflings, flings that would normally show up in your camp, there are replacements that otherwise wouldn't even appear. That's why I had to make sure I invited them to my camp because then otherwise we'd never see these guys. They're all really weak though, so it was like shooting fish in a solo cup. And I'm sure you guys are thinking I forgot a couple tieflings, but any of the ones that I wasn't able to kill in the camp now will hopefully show up in Act 2. Usually you can have a special night with some of your companions after saving the grove, but Shadowheart wasn't feeling it, so I got in my bedroll all alone for the night. I started the next day with a a jump scare from Halson. F 
dude. Literally the first thing I saw in the morning. Halson kind of forces you to let him join your camp because he wants to travel with you to Act 2 and settle some business there. This doesn't matter right now, but I'm pretty sure it will later. I had exterminated all of the tieflings, but I still had to kill the actual residents of the Emerald Grove. There were about as many of them as there were tieflings, but they were generally a little stronger. A major benefit of killing every NPC, though, is getting an actual buttload of XP for your troubles. I've said it a few times already, but I was simply too strong. They could have tripled their numbers, but I still don't think it would have made a difference. The more powerful druids inside Druid HQ weren't able to do much either. Someone was missing, though. Where the f*** is Kaga? I didn't see her inside, so I stole the idol of Syl Sylvanas to see if that would bait her out, but nothing. It wasn't until I ran all the way back to the entrance that I actually found her. If she had backup, then she might have been trouble, but when I'm dealing like 30 damage at the very start of the fight, there's just not much that someone at her level can do. And with Astarian landing the final blow, I had successfully killed every single living being inside of the Emerald Grove. <laughs> Except the kids. <laughs> So like 60 pages ago now, I said that I had to go back to the Blighted Village to kill someone else, and this is when I remembered it. I went into the cellar where the mirror and the skeleton guys were, and picked up the scroll of Summon Quasit. This is Shovel, a mouthy but also endearing little Quasit. And this is Shovel falling off a cliff to his death. The scroll disappears from your inventory, and you can't summon him anymore. I made another quick stop on this hill to grab this little bag of spiders. Bye spiders! <laughs> There's only two more encounters to go before I've actually killed everyone in this section of the game. Outside of the Mountain Pass, a road that can lead to Act 2, there are some troublemakers. First, Alika. She got rocked. Then, for the last encounter, I stopped back at camp and traded in Astarian for Lazel. She doesn't have to be here for this part, but I feel like she deserves to be. These are Lazel's people, and- oh wait, that's not racist, right? Yeah, anyway, these are Githyanki sent here by Queen Vlakith to retrieve the astral prism that we just happen to be carrying. They don't know that we have it though, and instead of playing it cool, I threatened them. Their leader, Vegeta, flies away on a cool dragon. He's not gone for good though, we'll see him later. Who is gone for good though is the Gith that remains here. I respect Shadowheart earlier to be a Tempest Domain Cleric, and I think that is a great choice because she's much more versatile now. I'm getting off track though. The Githyanki put up a fight, but it wasn't nearly enough. And that's it. I mean, that's it for this section of the game. We're moving on from Act 1 to what I like to refer to as Act 1.5. I'm gonna try to speed through this section a bit because god damn it is this video long. The first person most people run into here is Lady Esther. She's kinda weird, and she asks you to steal a Githyanki egg from the crash we're about to go to. I don't f with Esther, so I crushed her skull. Also, she dropped some really good items for a monk, and I might have to have someone try that out later. That down there is the monastery where the Githyanki are currently taking up residence, aka a crash. On the way there, I killed some ghouls and some death shepherds. I killed this poor blue jay that actually has a cute little quest you can do if you talk to him, and then I killed the people outside of the monastery before they could close the doors. Now I don't have to find another way in later, and I could just go in through here. I wasn't quite ready to go in there yet, as there's still some folks outside of the monastery I want to take care of. I went into the distillery, I think that's the word, and killed all of the drunk ass kobolds. I wish kobolds actually showed up more in this game, because they're really funny, and I like them. Being funny doesn't exclude you from death by my hand, though. I climbed higher into the monastery and found a room full of Gramishka. What's a Gramishka? Uh, they're kind of like hairless cats that cry like human babies, and they get really weird around magic. <laughs> I honestly, I can't, I, I feel like I can't explain them better than that. They weren't too bad, though. That little battle brought me up to level 6, which is cool, and I'm now halfway to the max level. The only people left outside of the monastery were this Guardian of Faith, who couldn't really do much to fight back as long as I kept my distance, and these two giant eagles on the tippy top. I don't feel bad for killing these guys anymore, because this isn't their nest, it's actually that little blue jay's nest that I killed earlier. But hey, we're we're done out here, now let's go into the crush and get rid of everyone in there. The Githyanki are a pretty hostile race of people, but I'm much scarier than they'll ever be, so a little intimidation got me inside. This place is pretty big, but the room I always start in is the infirmary. Here, there is a huge turn for Lazel's quest, and I'll show you why. This weird bug chair looking thing is called a Zathisk. It's supposed to cleanse us of the tadpoles, and it's what Lazel's been driving us towards for the whole game. I let her enter the Zathisk. <laughs> 
I can't say it. You know what I'm trying to say. And pretty quickly, it's made clear that the Zathisk isn't going to cure her. It's going to kill her. I tried to get her out, but was unsuccessful, and she had to get her own way out before it disintegrated her. She was rightfully angry, and so was the doctor. I'm still not clear if this thing was supposed to kill the people that enter it or not, or if it was just gonna kill Lazel or what, but the doctor is mad that something obviously went wrong, and she storms off. You can either break out of this room, because the doctor locks you in, or you can wait long enough for her to come back. But regardless of what you do, she'll come back with some gift to kill you. For some reason during this fight, I just kept misclicking things and doing stuff that I didn't mean to, and I'm not sure what was going on, but I was gonna have to pull it together if I was gonna defeat the entire crash. I did end up winning this battle, but it was sloppy and certainly not up to my standards. I slept for the night after that and got right back into the action when we woke up. I went into the hatchery next because, uh, because it's next door, and I killed the three people in the room. Well, technically there's more than three, because there's also the Githyanki egg that Esther asked you to grab. This egg can actually hatch, and you can see the little f that comes out later in Act 3, and he's crazy, but I'm gonna bypass that and abort him now. I made my way to the quartermaster, killing some people on the way, and then did some trading before, you guessed it, killing the person I just traded with. Classic. I killed the other people in here too, and while I was right here, I killed the Gith Yankee that were guarding the entrance. I mean, I did tell them I was a killer when I got here. It's not my fault they let my crazy ass in here. I've done pretty well so far, but this room, the trading room, had me a little worried. There's just a lot of them in here, but a well-placed fireball from Gale started the fight off strongly in our favor. Like, really strongly, because there was only four of them left, and two of them were severely injured. I did what I do best and killed the rest of them. Another great thing about Baldur's Gate is the pure freedom that you have to handle situations in so many different ways, and I was about to abuse that. I killed these two idiots, realized that I hadn't eaten any tadpoles yet, and then consumed like, I don't know, seven of them or something gross, and then went to bed so I'd be at full strength to carry out my master plan. Now, there's some NPCs here that typically run away really fast and won't give me much time to kill them. This time, though, I placed a lightning glyph outside the door, entered turn-based mode when they stepped on it, and then let the fireball chopper sing. The fireball went off, made them my enemies, and then that activated that lightning glyph and finished off the ones that survived the fireball. I was giggling like a psychotic little kid after that. I just, I love the freedom that this game gives you, and I couldn't believe how well my plan worked out. Then, Kithrak Therizin was in prime murdering position and didn't even know it. I cooked her and her dogs with another fireball, folded her with a huge divine smite, and then ganged up on the other Githyanki in the room. The Kithrak drops a very solid sword for Lazel because it gets bonuses when being wielded by a Gith. I know it's surprising, but we are almost done with the crash now. The, I guess, final boss of the crash is Wawargaz and his lackeys. Thankfully, they don't just attack you on sight, and the way that they were standing lined them up perfectly to get destroyed by a lightning bolt. Man, Gale is really carrying me through this section, huh? I'd say the rest of us pulled our weight here, though, because in the first turn alone, we killed everyone except for the big man, and after missing damn near everything on turn two, I killed him on the third turn. But just when we thought it was over, the boss's boss showed up. This is Vlakith, the queen of the Gith Yankee. I don't f*** with Vlakith. She's rude, she's old, and she's a huge stinky liar. I won't get super into her story yet, I'll save that for later, but I was certainly not kneeling to someone like her. She commanded that we enter the astral prism and kill its occupant. Now, I always assumed that she was talking about our guardian, but there's actually someone else residing in the prism as well, and again, we'll talk about that later. I did enter the prism though, not because she said to, but because I wanted to. I also wanted to give Lazel some peace of mind, because after this whole crush adventure, I feel like she definitely deserved it. I entered the prism, and Dump explained to me that he had stolen the prism from Vlakith, and that he has secrets about her that could not only end her rule as queen, but those same secrets are also keeping us alive. I trust him, and even though he had submitted to me, I told him to get his ass up. I shared everything he told me with Lazel using the power of our tadpoles, and she didn't really know what to think. I always feel bad for her here, because the queen she has dedicated her life to is really not as all-powerful and noble as her people believe her to be, and now Lazel is one of the very few people to know that fact, and it's hard for her to accept. But for the second of three times in this video, we've done it. I've officially killed everyone in the mountain pass. That just leaves us with one last area. When we went to bed that night, Vegeta showed up at our camp and told Lazel that he wants to help us take down Vlakith. I could kill him here, but I'm 99% sure I'd miss out on killing his dragon and some other people later if I do that now, so we agreed to work together and we went back to sleep. There's a couple ways to get to the Underdark, but the way I like to take is through the Goblin Camp. Gut, one of the true souls I killed earlier, has a passage through her- Oh shit! 
Pulma, how did I forget about you? Okay, well, bye, Pulma. Anyway, there's a little puzzle back here that opens up a way to the Underdark. I descended the ladder, and boom, Underdark. Pretty close to the way we came in, there's an ambush waiting for us. This Doom Extra shows up and turns a bunch of statues into people. Well, they were already people, but they were turned to stone, but now they're people again, and... <laughs> Man, I'm so tired. I didn't kill the spectator as fast as I probably could have because I was letting him unpetrify everyone so that I could kill them as people and not as not, 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 not statues. And not as statues. Then a quick jaunt to the west, I think it's west, will lead you right to the b b b bullet. By the time it even got to take a turn, it only had four health left. Needless to say, RIP. The next little area is such a magical place. This, my friends, is the Festering Cove. These little guys are Kuotoa, and they are worshipping a god named Buwal, who is obviously a parody of the god of murder in this universe, Ball. I told him I could show him what real death looks like because I wanted him to take that as a threat, but he gave me a shit little weapon, and I guess I, he thought that I would kill for him. He was most definitely wrong, though, because my gang and I started attacking him and his congregation. Buol was less than impressive, and the Kuotoa were already weak to begin with, so they didn't last long. This whole thing is just so silly, and I always enjoy coming down here. I was spent by the end of the fight, and called it a night. Then, for some reason, Lazel and Shadowheart started bickering like little girls. Why on earth are they acting like they just met, and Lazel is talking about the prism like she doesn't already know what it is? I, I don't know, man, but things got really ugly in the middle of the night when Shadowheart got on top of Lazel and... God, it should have been me. I'm sorry, what are we talking about? Oh, right. I calmed her down, they made nice, and we were all friends again in the morning. Back to the Underdark, I hit the Arcane Tower next. There's only one unique NPC here, Bernard, but he's a little hostile, so I fought with him and these random suits of armor that appeared to help him. I made sure to target Bernard first, because once he's gone, the animated armors can't really do much by themselves. The next place I want to go is the Decrepit Village. No, not the Blighted Village from earlier, the Decrepit Village. There's some mean little guys here. I do not like these guys because A, they're mean, and B, they're slave drivers. And I don't know about you guys, but personally, I think owning slaves is whack. By being nice and sneaky, I shut them all down before they had a chance to fight back. Between the arcane tower and these dudes, I needed to sleep. We woke up and hopped right on this boat. We sailed into the dark, presumably wherever those guys came from. On the way, a boat of other Dwergar shows up and interrogates us. Of course, I pushed this little dickhead into the water and then killed all of his friends. Sometimes being evil is fun. And hey, level seven. Now, in this this place, I can't sleep, because if I do, some things can get messed up, some people can get away, and I wouldn't have effectively done my job. So I didn't waste any time and killed these two assholes on the docks. Also, I just realized I'm swearing a lot suddenly, and I think it's just because I hate these guys. I, I, I'm sorry. I continue the killing against Mermath and his gaggle of spiders. Gaggle? What would you call a... <sighs> You know what, I can just look this one up. Kathy, what do you call a group of spiders? A group of spiders is called a cluster or a clutter. Thank you, Kathy. There were two Dwergar off to the side who were throwing dead slaves into the water. I beat the ever-loving Dookie out of them and then paid my respects to their victims. And then, what I did, Shadowheart piped up with some out-of-pocket sh**. The audio's messed up for some reason, but she said, save your prayers for someone who at least had the spine to fight back. Um, what? You should never hit a woman, but you can... <laughs> <laughs> but I cracked your ass for that. Moving on, there's a very important encounter coming up. This is Philomene. Normally, you have to talk to Philomene and stop her from blowing everyone up, but I instead just snuck up on her and killed her. This is an important encounter because of this barrel of rune powder. That's gonna be very useful later. I went around after that and just started putting the hurt on anyone I could find. These meanie head wranglers, and yes, unfortunately, they're animals, a Maragon and his Hellsbore buddies, some architects or something of that sort, some more animals, and then came the big fight. I wrote in my notes, I didn't mean to start this fight, but dude, I clearly meant to start this fight. I have no idea what past me was talking about. This fight was a little easier than you might expect because we had somewhat of a funnel that the enemies would have to go through to actually get close. Then I could just light people up with spells and attacks in the funnel and once again had found a way to gain an advantage. Although to be fair, I didn't really even mean to do that on purpose, so it just kind of worked out that way. These guys were all over here to try and clear out the rubble blocking this door. I tried to kill the slaves quick and easy with a fireball, but old Lunkbug ate that shit and I was forced to Eldritch Blast him. I used a rune powder vial I got from Philomene, not the barrel, just the vial, to blow the rubble away and out came Nier. Well, okay, he didn't actually come out. Uh, Lazel got in there and took her life's worth of anger out on him and completely destroyed him. The other slaves that were trapped in there with Nier were already dead. We aren't quite done with this area yet because we still need to get into the actual forge part of the Grim Forge. Further on, we found some Shar worshippers' bodies and I 
basically was like, damn, that's crazy. And then Shart had the gall to say some, I hope my remains are treated with a little more dignity. B have you lost your mind? Hippo crit. As we get closer to the forge, there's some enemies to take care of. First, this band of magma methods. Band? What would you call a group of- uh, okay, okay, bit's dead, I know. I killed them, this lava elemental. I made sure to grab this sentient amulet because it's gonna be uh, useful for later. And then before the boss fight of this area, I went to sleep. I said before that I can't sleep here, but everyone's dead now, so it doesn't matter anymore. Then comes the aforementioned boss fight. This guy, Grim, is the protector and namesake of the Grim Forge. He is one tough cookie. My battle with Grim was the toughest battle I had fought since I was level 3 and took on the Oathbreaker Knight. His resistances are pretty scary, and you have to keep him in a state that the game calls superheated so that his metal body will get weakened by the hot lava. By the end of the fight, Gale was dead and Lazelle wasn't far behind. And then when Gale dies, his spectral self appears and starts yapping about how he has this very specific method to resurrect him should he die. But I just ignored everything he said and used a scroll of Revify, dumb word, that I already had and brought him back. While I was here, I used the forge to make some very tough adamantine heavy armor that I will likely be wearing for the rest of the game. You'll never guess what I did next. <laughs> Guess what? This is the final day in Act 1. That's right, everything we've got left is getting done right now, so let's not waste any time. The major area we need to deal with is the Myconid Colony. I talked to Blurg when I got there, and had him summon his Mind Flayer buddy. I gotta be honest, I have no idea if killing them here has any consequence for later, but boy do I hope not, because they are D-E-A-L-T-H-Y space N-O-T space A-L-I-V-E. I went over to Thula, who was dying because she was poisoned, and she gave me permission to put her out of her misery. Which is funny because I had an antidote that would have fixed her right up, but you know, I gotta do my job. The Mykonid leader wanted proof that Nier was dead, so I went back to the forge, found his body, cut his head off, and brought it to him. He was so happy that he deemed me Life Chanter, which is unbelievably ironic considering what I'm gonna do to his whole group of people in like 40 seconds. Before I could kill them all, I took Sovereign Glut, 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 I don't know, I don't pay attention, to the lake where I had killed the Dwergar earlier because he wanted to see it with his own eyes. This inspired him to take Sovereign Spa's position as leader, and I told him I'd help him because why not? Spa didn't like that very much, and he attacked me. Well, he didn't get the chance. Oh my god, I think I just did 103 damage with that hit. Then, when Glut was celebrating his newfound leadership role, I hit him with a fireball. I proceeded to kill Glut and every other Myconid remaining in the colony. Maybe they would have had a chance if they were standing around me with, I don't know, like AK-47s, but as as it was, the plant folk were absolutely helpless. The only people left here were Dareth and her pet. I made their deaths very quick. We only have two, count them, two unique NPCs left. First, we need to find Dareth's husband, Braylon. He's not too far from the Myconid colony, but he is in a bad spot. He's surrounded by what's called Bibberbang, a highly explosive and highly toxic plant that- Oh yeah, that should kill him. Wait, what? How in the hell did he survive that? Okay, well, sorry man, you've gotta go one way or another. The very last remaining NPC is blocked by some hook horror. I took care of them though, and kinda ran into the last guy accidentally. This is Philro the Forgotten. Ironic name, I know. And this is Philro's dead body. I killed the last hook horror and took a nice deep breath. <sighs> I had really done it. It took a 27 page script, but I had killed every NPC in Baldur's Gate 3's first act. I know that isn't as powerful as a statement as just saying I killed every NPC, but I feel more accomplished than I think I ever have in any of my videos ever. Even just the first act took so much planning and research, so I cannot imagine how insane act 2 and god forbid act 3 are gonna be. I could use some help from you guys. Let me know if there's anyone I missed in act 1, or if there's any obscure or off the beaten path NPCs in the second or third act that I should keep an eye out for. I haven't even started working on Act 2 yet, so your input can still be very valuable. If you made it this far, I truly don't even know what to say to you. You're, you might just be as crazy as I am. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you all in Act 2. GG's everyone.